So today's video is a special little project that I had the honor of doing. And today's build is for no one other than Mr. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's your boy, Young Philly. That's right. It's Mr. Yeah, man himself, Young Philly. Now, Philly hit me up and said he wanted to all out PC for Warzone 2. So Philly gave the order that he wanted to go all out. So all out is exactly what we did. I'm going to give you guys the rundown of all the parts that we used in the build. And towards the end of the video, don't worry, I'm going to show off the PC in all of its RGB gloriness. If you guys do want to see more PC building videos, make sure you hit the like button so I can see that you guys enjoy it. And if you did enjoy this video specifically, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Alright, that's enough waffling for now. Let's get straight into the parts and then we'll show you the build. So we'll start with the case as it's going to be the home for everything to live in. And you know we had to do it only one way and we had to do it right. And the only way of doing this is by getting the Lian Li 011 Dynamic. We went for the XL version because we got some chonky parts getting inside of here. I also went for the XL version because I knew that after all the parts being inside it will still give me plenty of room to get my hands in to do any screws or any cables that I forgot to plug in etc. This is actually my first time working with the Lian Li case and the 011 Dynamics specifically but the amount of customization that you can do in this case is actually mind-blowing. You can do customizations such as dynamic drive base for old school 3.5 inch drives, multiple radiator mounts and plenty of room inside for custom water cooling layouts. And just like I mentioned previously once you put all of your parts inside there's still so much room to maneuver your hands about so you won't be ending up squeezing and getting cramps in your hands trying to get into all the nooks and crannies. Next up we got the motherboard and just like the moral of this whole build we had to go all out with it and there was only one choice which is the Asus ROG Crosshair X670E. This motherboard is an absolute beast which has great overclocking features which will allow us to push the CPU further with also loads of room for expandability should we need to add drives in the future or more PCI cards later down the line. Oh yeah, let's not forget to mention, also has some pretty cool lights too. And next, we move on to the brains of the whole machine, the CPU. So for the CPU, we went with the AMD 7950X, AMD's top of the line CPU with a base clock of 4.5 gigahertz, but don't worry, it's adjusted to run on 5.2 gigahertz. Now before the Team Blue fanboys ruin all the fun here, Yes, the 13900K has a higher boost clock, but while it might have a higher boost clock, Intel CPUs are known to run slightly on the toastier side when pushed to the edge. Also, let's not forget to mention that the 7950X has 64 megabytes of level three cache compared to the 13900K's 36 megabytes. To put this simply in non-geek terminology, cache is basically a memory bank that is easily accessible and speedily accessible. Modern games have a lot of randomness and anomalies to them, and if you don't provide your PC with enough cache, instructions for your CPU start to stack up, meaning that your GPU is going to take a hit in frames it can render on screen because the instructions are not being churned out fast enough from your CPU, causing a huge bottleneck and causing your frames to dip. Because that's the key point here, we're after consistent frames. Us humans, we don't really notice the difference between say 250 FPS or 300 FPS, but you'll definitely notice the difference if the game goes from 150 FPS down to 90. So we're trying to avoid all of those 1% lows or those spikes. For cooling, simply we've just gone with the NZXT Kraken Z73. This is a super nice AIO, with it being a 360 mil rad, it's definitely going to keep the temps of the 7950X down. And it's got a nice screen on it too, which we can customize and program to our liking. For memory, we've got 64 gigabytes of DDR5 Corsair Vengeance running at 52 megahertz. 52 megahertz. For our memory, we've got 64 gigabytes of DDR5 Corsair Vengeance running at 5200 megahertz. And our GPU is the MSI RTX 4080. This was actually changed after the build to the AMD RX 79 XTX. But for the purpose of this build and for the purpose of the video, we stuck a 4080 in it for now. Storage, we went with two two terabyte Sabrin Rocket NVMe drives. And lastly, all the fans, of course, you know we had to do it right. We had to go with the Lian Li Uni fans. All the fans being hooked up to one controller makes it super easy and super customizable through their software. And it makes it so much less hassle with all the cables inside of the machine. All right, now that the boring nerdy talk is all over, you guys get to finally see the PC. Remember that if you guys did enjoy the video, I'd appreciate if you drop a like on the video so I can see that you guys enjoyed it. And I'll definitely keep uploading more videos like this. Also, feel free to check out all the other videos on the channel and if you like the content that i produce please consider hitting the subscribe button thanks so much for watching today's video enjoy the pc reveal hopefully i'll catch you in the next one that's me done for today peace
Hello again, it's the nerd guy talking more again about FPS and compute pods. I just wanted to end with some benchmarks of the machine running the games that are most likely to be played on it. And I know this isn't the most scientific way to see how PC is performing, it's a good real world test to see how it would do with day to day usage. As expected with Warzone there are some spikes, noticeably more on the Warzone side of things compared to multiplayer, but I imagine this is due to the large size of the map and the nature of the rendering of objects in the distance. But you can see in titles such as Forza Horizon 5, the CPU is having no problem crunching through the numbers to render on my 1080p display. When the PC is rendering more into the 2K and 4K resolutions, the GPU will be called upon more, but you can see a fluctuation in the workload that the GPU has to do due to the smaller resolution. Again, this is not scientific display of the machine and its capabilities, more just a real world run test and it was hard to decide between the 1300K and the 7950X. But the winning factor for me was that the 14th gen Intel CPUs are planning to use a complete different socket type to what they're already using on their current motherboards. Whereas AMD is only getting started with their AM5 socket, so in terms of upgradability, the AM5 socket was a clear winner to me. Alright, I actually promise now, that's the end of the nerdy talk. I hope you guys enjoyed the PC. Please make sure to drop a like on the video if you did enjoy, and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next one.